Hi, I'm Shmel Lane and I just wanted to show you a little bit today about what I do when I come to the end of a kit. So this is basically the end of my January Best of Both Worlds kit. I have one 12 by 12 page left as a background and it's this one from Basic Grey Soleil collection. And I love this sort of page to do a background with all sorts of little bits and pieces. It works better with a sort of abstract design rather than something that's very gridded. Um, and it has little bits of kind of watercolor, a nice texture to it. So it's something you can throw more mist or more paint on, or you can leave it as it is and it's got enough. So I also have um, different little bits and pieces of paper. I have some extra pieces that I'd punched earlier on and then didn't use all of the pieces that I'd punched on those layouts so I have a few of those left over. I have this little strip that says week in review and um, I think I'll probably use the other side because I'm not um, I haven't done a week in review of photos or anything like that that I wanted to scrapbook. I have one little camera left that I cut out from a Studio Calico paper. One four by six card. This kind of off cut of the floral and yellow polka dot, a little off cut of this floral and polka dot. I've got some buttons left that are in a completely different color to the papers that I have left. That sort of thing that you do when you, you get to the end of the kit. And um, so I have all these sorts of little bits and pieces and all I've done is just with the, the boxes like this is to cut them to something that was playing around the edges. So this also had this little bit somewhere, fits on here somewhere, and um, I'd cut the flowers out of this piece. So I just chopped this into a nice even rectangle so that I didn't have this extra bit at the end, if that makes sense. So this is basically what I would do when I get to the end. These are all going to be different collections and I'm mixing white and cream. So for me, this is a case where I'm going to want to add ink to everything to make it have something in common. And even if you don't add ink to all your pages, if you're trying to put all sorts of scraps together that don't really have quite as much in common as you might like. For example, if you tend to stick within one or two collections and then you're going to use scraps of three or four collections together, the ink in that case will help you have some sort of continuity between all those different pieces of paper. So even if it's not something you want to do on every page, I know that I do it pretty much every layout and it could be a little more than a little more effort than what you might want to put into a page but in this sort of case when you're using all odd bits and pieces it can really help. So I have those kind of three larger pieces. I'm going to be using one 4x6 photo because that'll be a good balance to the 4x6 card and um, I took more than one photo at Disneyland, I promise. So what I'm going to do is use this as kind of the introduction page. I didn't take enough Disneyland photos to make a whole album. I was only there for half a day, but I do have, you know, a few layouts worth and, and different things that I want to divide. And um, so I want to put all my Alice in Wonderland photos together and all my Adventureland photos together or something like that. So it will take a few layouts. So I'm going to make one single page that introduces that. So it's kind of a mini title page. It won't be a whole album. It'll just be when you flip to this page in my normal album for 2013, it'll kind of introduce the fact that, oh, okay, we went to Disneyland, or I went to Disneyland anyway. Yeah. So that's where I'm starting. I want to add a little bit more to this background, and for that I'm just going to use a Mr. Huey in a light blue, basically because there's kind of a turquoise greeny effect going on here, and I want to include different shades of blue because this one is a good match. This one is actually quite a good match to what's up here in the corner, but it's very subtle. And then there's this predominant blue in the photo, and that's another blue entirely. So I figured the idea to just kind of add quite a few blues would actually end up helpful. So I'm just going to go on the diagonal and add some of these blues in the corner. So with the misting tube, just the, the tube from the sprayer, I get those nice little dots. And then I can also use an eyedropper and just take the, the sprayer out and the eyedropper creates much bigger drops. So I tend to use the two together so that I have that variety. 
and then just whatever is left over in the eyedropper you can shake into the bottle. Um, I will say the eyedroppers don't end up looking the prettiest things ever, but I haven't had any trouble with it contaminating the colors, so I just haven't I haven't felt motivated to, to clean it in between because it seems to not give me any trouble. I use it just like you've just seen there, and uh, using it in all the different colors hasn't given me any problems. At, at this point so um, so that's what it looks like okay so while I let this dry I'm just going to take all these um, different boxes and kind of figure out how I would like to arrange them and Mr. Huey doesn't take too long to dry so it'll only take a minute my mist is dry and I have these pieces left over I always find that at this point in a kit where I don't have a lot of paper left over. This is when it's a great time to head to my scraps and I just let the colors of the papers that I'm starting with here dictate what colors I'll grab from my basket of scrap papers. So I was looking for things in even more shades of blue and maybe a little bit of yellow. So I pulled out three pieces. I have this one in a light blue, this one in a more um, royal saturated blue, and this yellow uh, ledger print which will be a great way to have some space for journaling. So then I just take all of these pieces and stack them up really really simply and it doesn't have to be large pattern pieces like this. It can also work with smaller pieces and if you end up with something like this obviously if I'm covering up the middle I really only needed a little strip like this but when it's in a basket of, of papers that are partially used I always tend to think it's better to just grab them and use them rather than overthink and save them purely because otherwise I'll be overrun with paper. If you need to save your paper and make it stretch a little further then by all means cut it so that um, you get the most from it. So then I just start layering these up really really simply and I tend to do the last page with with kit leftovers in this sort of fashion either so that I get a layered effect or if I end up without boxes if I end up with lots of strips then I'll do lots of strip pieces and I've done one of those in a video at the end of a, a set of supplies as well um, but this time with this particular kit and the pages I'd made with it I just tended to have more box shaped pieces so now that I've gotten to the, the, the large layers are down and I've put that other four by six element then I want to make sure I get my photo in here to start balancing things so I will add the photo here now when I'm stacking in this sort of fashion I don't want it to be perfectly in line I want it to be a little bit at an angle just a really small one really small angle and then I can start tucking other things in. So I had this piece for the writing. And I can just tuck that under that edge. And I might even add a pop dot here underneath this corner to give it a bit more dimension. There we go. And then I have these pieces left. I want to bring that yellow over to the other side. So I may need to pick the photo up a little bit. That's okay. And then I had this darker blue and I'd actually kind of like to use it as corner pieces so that you get a little bit on one side and a little bit on the other and that will bring all these different blues together. So I'm just going to cut it on the diagonal and then find little places where I can tuck it underneath the layers. what I don't like and I actually thought about this before I did it but then I just I cut it really quickly rather than thinking about it and this way I have square edges rather than um, rather than it looking like a triangle piece because I'm putting it underneath I'd rather it look like a box like everything else so I just cut so that I end up 
with boxed out edges. And then I bring a little bit of that up to this corner too. In the end I will have covered up a lot of that light blue piece that I started with. Um, I think that piece of paper is probably about nine years old. It's really old KI memories. Um, and I've used it, I had several sheets of it and I've ha I have it in several different colors. So I have no problem with the fact that I've covered up quite a lot of it. That's absolutely all right in my book. Okay, so now I have all those large paper elements. I wanna bring in some smaller pieces and embellishments. I have um, that camera. Now there's already a camera in this design because there's one here. So one option is to bring it up to the other side so that I have those things on a diagonal. But this camera is facing in one particular direction and it's facing the wrong way to go up here because then it leads your eye off the page rather than into the page. So if I bring it down here I can find somewhere, perhaps this is the diagonal that I end up using, that will work because I can add in a little bit more here and there to make it um, have something that it faces. And that way there's no diagonal line that's going to lead your eye in the wrong direction. So since I'm going to add this heavy gray element up at the top, I wanted to add a bit of gray down here so that it will balance. So that's just that little strip of gray pattern paper that I had. And I have these yellow labels. So I think what I'll do is separate this so that it will show on both sides of the camera. And then I'll take the camera and make that more dimensional. So I'll use pop dots on that whole piece so that the whole thing is lifted up rather than just part of it. And I have some small versions of those yellow labels so I can put those in another spot on the page so that I'm creating that sort of uh, dynamic of something that repeats in different spots. So I quite like how they look together actually. But then I need some gray to bring into this. I don't have any complete cameras left here. I have almost a full complete camera. <laughs> um, so I think I'll try cutting out this small one and see if I can make it work even though it's not 100% there. It's more like 90% here. If I tuck it under another element, it shouldn't be quite so obvious that part of it's missing. Or I just put another piece on top. So ink these so that they all match. And then I'll do the same thing, the camera on pop dots, the labels flat. And that should give it another few things that it has in common with the other area of embellishment. Now I have a couple options here because I can put it so that it overlaps the photo or I could pull it further apart so that it's over the paper. In this case, because the photo is sky here and I'm just going to cover up a tiny little bit, I think this is the stronger design choice is to have it overlap the photo. Um, but I totally understand that not everybody likes to put things on top of the picture. So in that case, or if there were something really important here that I didn't want to cover, I just move it over a layer and put it over the next batch. So I'll go ahead and attach this camera, but the corner of it is missing, so I know I need to add something else here so that this piece isn't quite so obviously gone. So maybe that's a good place to put some lettering for my title, or um, I also wanted to bring in these extra embellishments. So I'll just have a quick look because I want to make sure I get enough room for my writing on this page and then I can pick up um, the rest of the embellishment once my words are all there. I used the navy blue Studio Calico stickers and the gold stickers for my title and added in all the handwritten journaling that I wanted to include including the date and the location and then um, the story 
that introduces these pages about Disneyland. And now I'm ready to come back to the embellishment and finish everything off. So I know I had this little awkward spot here. I don't feel that this is completely finished. And I have an imbalance here where I have more space at the bottom than at the top. And it's not enough that it's purposely one side is uneven. It's just ever so slightly so it looks um, like it's maybe a bit of a mistake so I want to balance that off so it uh, doesn't appear awkward to the eye. So I had a look at other embellishments I just had um, in my stash that kind of needed to be used because they're, they're getting a little bit old. I need to get them off my shelf and onto a page. And these were the right color. These are some layered pieces from Sassafras, but they are quite big. <laughs> so I didn't really want to add this giant flower up here, um, but there are these two smaller pieces. So my plan is to use these smaller elements and then see if I'll use the larger one at all, or maybe not. Um, so I'm going to use this one to cover the bottom of the camera. And I'm thinking I want to put something in the middle of this, so I'm not going to stick it, I'm just tacking it down on top. And then because I've used this one here, I want to use something else with this embellishment here. So use the other smaller piece. And I think this one needs a little bit of ink. So this one I thought was okay because the edges are all of that darker color. So I think I'll just tuck this underneath here so it's kind of layered in, but maybe bring it up a little bit so that it covers all these different layers. And that then gives me the option of bringing something down to this part of the page, either on this side or here. And what I'm thinking is maybe I have just enough of that yellow polka dot to get another label or two out of that. And then I could layer that in and then bring in a little scrap of this gray. And it wouldn't even have to be a whole camera. I could just use a piece. And then this in this embellishment group, this piece will be way bigger. But in this one, it's the camera that's way bigger and so on. So see if I can... Uh, punch enough out of these little scraps that I have left over to make that work and then just come back with uh, maybe some word stamps to balance things out. When I added the large uh, sassafras embellishment, the big red button that was on the top, the glue failed and it just completely came apart. And that made me realize that I could, uh, it just kind of gave me a little reminder that I had all those buttons left on my embellishment card. So I picked up a few of those and made them uh, mix and match in with those embellishments. So this is something that I kind of do at the end of a kit. I'm just looking at what pieces I have and sometimes even if it looks like they won't match, once you put them all together, they'll actually come out okay. So it turned out that that peachy pink orange is actually quite a good match once I had all that yellow, especially if I added yellow thread to the middle. So I've added one, two, three, four of those to the layout and those embellishment groups are coming together and they look a little bit more purposeful and formal now. So I'm just going to to um, finish with some word stamps. So I've got my uh, Kelly Perky stamp set that I've been using with this whole kit. And instead of stamping in black, like I have been on most of the pages, I'm just going to use a blue ink to bring in even more blue. And I thought I would just go around the corners and stamp not necessarily on the horizontal, but more um, just kind of framing everything so some of them will be on the vertical. Just using different phrases here and there. And these are all small enough that they shouldn't compete with the title. Oh, I was almost going to call it done, but I will add one last little thing. And that's something not in the kit, but just from my stash. I'm just going to take a few little enamel dots to bring in the different... I want to bring in that darker blue into these embellishment circles, I think. So I'll just um, dot them about... here and there. And I think that's where I'll call it done. So 
I've used up um, almost everything from the kit. I literally have just these sorts of scraps, which I don't think are really worth saving at this point. I've got four or five, five little buttons left, so maybe um, they, I mean, they can always just go in my button jar and come in useful for something like that. And I'll probably still be able to get um, a few more things out of my letter stickers, of course, but um, I'll have to just be careful of what I'm spelling. I actually have quite a few vowels left in the thickers because this font is really good um, in the balance of the letters. But this smaller set, I'm now out of A's um, and I've got quite a few letters that are getting rather depleted. But it's not um, completely spent yet. I can still get a bit more out of those. But my papers are well and truly gone, I would say at this point. I've got the stamps to keep on using. I've got my washi tape I can keep on using until it's all gone. So um, with that, I think I will call this kit used up and I'll move on to my kit for February, which you can see here on the first. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.